This week on the bike, I've had the InPeak Power Crank single sided power meter. Today, I dive into all the details and my experience to date with this unit. Prior to receiving their email to check out their power meter, I hadn't heard of InPeak, so it was handy they included a little spiel here. So, Power Crank is a power meter from InPeak, a company specialized in modern solutions in the field of sports electronics. Power Crank is the first Polish power meter, designed and manufactured 100% in Poland. The power meter is assembled on the left crank arm and shows the power generated by the cyclist's left leg. Obviously, it then doubles it, so it uh, shows you the total power. Leading Polish riders of road cycling, cyclocross, and cross-country cycling are involved in the development and testing of this product. Due to their help, we have created a reliable, precise, lightweight, customized power crank power meter. So there's the overview of InPeak and where they come from. First up, we need to know there's two versions of this power meter, the Power Crank Ready and the Power Crank Custom. The first version, the Power Crank Ready, where you jump on their website and order a pre-made, pre-cooked, pre-glued, pre-calibrated, pre-everything crank arm, and you just install it on your bike and away you go. Secondly is the Power Crank Custom, where you send in your compatible crank arm, they install it, calibrate it, verify that it works and then send it back to you. What I'm looking at this week has been the pre-cooked version, the Power Crank Ready with the Durace R9100. So top to bottom tech specs of this unit before we dive into the installation. So single-sided power meter and the one I've been looking at this week is the Shimano Durace R9100 compatibility. The Power Crank Ready, the pre-cooked solutions that they sell on their website and through dealerships are all Shimano crank sets from 105, Altegra, Durace, SLX, XT and XTR. The Power Crank Custom, where you send in your own compatible crank arm, can go from Shimano, Cannondale, Praxis, or SRAM. Do check their website, though, for compatibility. Frame compatibility, you need about 10 mil between the crank arm and frame to fit one of these power meters. Power source, CR2032 battery, claimed battery life of 200 hours, Ant Plus and Bluetooth Smart, as we expect these days. Power accuracy, plus or minus 2%. Maximum wattage, 2,000 watts. Cadence range, 20 to 200 RPM. Accelerometer based, so no magnets required. Active temperature compensation, yes. Te operating temperature, negative five to plus 50, so that's pretty good for Aussie conditions here. Weight to the crank, only plus 12 grams, nothing to report there. IP67 waterproofing certification, firmware upgradable via the app. Pricing, uh, I've got it in US just to standardize things here. So from 340 US up to 540 US, 105 up to Durace. And the Power Crank Custom, where you send in your own crank, is $360 US, plus or minus import taxes and postage, etc. Warranty, two years in the EU and a few other countries. I would check your store or from where you're purchasing if you're purchasing internationally about the warranty on this. Where this crank set sits in the whole scheme of things here, looking at the competitors in this space on the left, with the Altegra R8000 as my baseline here. You've got stages at the top, Pioneer 4i in peak, sit down near the bottom there, but then way below that is in the Gene Ridge, which I reviewed just the other day. All right, there are all the details. Let's jump onto the unboxing. Let's get this thing on the bike and get out on the road. I do really like Dura stuff. It is quite nice. Not much in the box here, stickers, documentation, a beautiful colored manual about how to install everything. A battery and a business card here with the security code. Okay, up close here on the crank set. Did I mention that I do like the look of Dura stuff? Beautiful. Okay, popping the battery cap here. Have a look what's inside. And it's not a battery. So throwing the battery in here. making sure it's pressed down perfectly, not to snap any tabs. And because this is what we do, we shall weigh the crank set. I believe the ridge was 207 or something. This is 188, so Durace winning the battle there and making sure it pairs to the element. If the unit pairs to the element, it's gonna to pair to anything. So just spinning to wake the unit up, hold next to sensor, searching for power meters. Voila, there we go, all good. Installation wise, I'm not going to take you through this step by step installation wise. Installing a crank is pretty straightforward. I did one the other day and it's quite a simple little task. Next up and always something I check for is the latest firmware, etc. So searching for the InPeak Manager app here in the App Store. It'll be also over on the Android Store if you're looking for that. Okay, once started up here, it takes you through step by step what the app is all about, how to wake up the crank set and how to search for it. So here we go. Crank found. We're going to name the crank. We'll call it Llama Crank. Pin code. Aha, good stuff. Security wise, one of the first units. Actually, I think it's the second unit. The um, Shimano crank set also has, or Shimano power meter also has 
a security code. But that's pretty cool to see. Next up, check for firmware. We're already up to date. It's a good sign. And we'll get this thing positioned correctly for calibration from within the app. We hit the calibrate button. There we are, calibrate value of two. Happy days, time to go for a ride. So over the last few days, I've been out here on the beautiful open roads. I can't report on the waterproofness of the unit because it's been beautiful weather. But up hills, down hills, across hills, and cursing at hills because hills are steep. So here's just a couple of rides outside. And finally, some side-to-side -side sprinting action just to throw the bike around a little bit. The GoPro really stabilizes that quite nicely, but that's there for our data set. It's all good. Okay, here we are once again, DC Rainmaker's analysis tool, where we can compare multiple power meters together with an overlay and see how they stack up against each other and find ourselves down some rabbit holes we never ever wanted to go down. Today, four rides, four nightmares, let's get into the details. So, first ride, if I've got the time, I like to discard the first ride as things bed in, as I've changed pedals over, just sometimes that's the way to do it. But I'm gonna include this one because it's indicative of what happened for the rest of the week. Three days we're deep into this so far. Okay, so first five minutes, let's forget about that. We grab the data, throw it away. We do some zero offsets out on the road and see how things tick along. So we'll grab this data set through here. The in-peak is very peaky, I'll give it that. There's the raw data here, uh, so one second um, reporting, with the Asioma Duo, so dual-sided. I'll split the thing later on to Uno, so bear with me. But what we're seeing here is the in-peak power meter reading a little high by probably 15 to 20 watts, just riding along, just riding along. Now, is that me being left, right wonky? Because I'm measuring two sides and only one, possibly. Let's continue with it. Also through here, uh, 249 versus 235. Again, we're about 15 watts, 14, 15 watts difference there. And into the sprints for this ride, the sprints look pretty good. The ramp up into the sprint and the sprint itself. So both peaking at 11.35 and 11.32. So very close there with the maximums. Not too bad given left, right, and a left being compared. So that's okay there. Um, and into out of the saddle, really reefing on the bars side to side, and it shows the similar Shimano issue of not being able to grab that, uh, the correct wattage, I guess, or reading a little low out of the saddle there on the left-hand side. In summary there, ride number one, the unit's reading a little high, 15 to 20 watts. The sprints are good. The out of the saddle is, I guess, to be expected these days. Nothing's gonna be quite right out of the saddle as you reef the bike side to side. Pedals are usually pretty good for that. Crank arms, not so much, although the four I did pretty well on that. So. Look, not quite happy days with ride number one. On to day two of data collection with this power meter. Uh, we're gonna throw away the first 15 minutes where I did perform the zero offset. And then we dive into the data here. This is the Asioma Duos and the in-peak power crank. Um, all is looking really well, 239, 239. Pretty good after that zero offset after 15 minutes. The blue line there is still a little more jagged compared to the uh, Asioma Duos but happy days, I thought everything was sorted, all good. And then at about 38 minutes there, I stopped, I split the Asio Majuros into Uno, so left only and left only crank, and from here on in, that's all I'm using to test, even indoors. So it gives us a true representation of the left power and takes me out of the equation. So my left-right wonkiness doesn't really come into play here. And from there, again, the data was pretty good. So diving in here, you can see it's a little more jagged from the in-peak unit. But 208, 204 average, here's the hill climb here. Uh, again, very jagged, it's unsmooth, but 278, 275, not too bad. And then just riding home, uh, what do we have? 158, 159. So based on this data, everything looks pretty good. After that 15 minute zero offset being performed, it looked good against the duos, it looked good against the Uno, and it was happy days. So two hours later, indoors, exactly the same configuration, but using the Uno, so the left pedal and the left crank and the Tax Neo, I'll jump up and show the data here. Uh, we didn't quite get to the end of the Llama lab test. In fact, I pulled the pin pretty early a number of times because I just wasn't gonna complete it with the numbers that I was seeing. So exactly the same configuration as outdoors, zero offset performed across all power meters at zero minutes and at 10 minutes. Here's what we're seeing for the steady state stuff. The blue is uh, the in-peak power crank 
We have the Uno. It says the Asio Maduro is up there, but it was the Uno. It's got the same anti-ID. So this was the Tax Neo and Asio Uno agreeing. And the in peak, as you can see, climbing just here up to 230 watts at the 200 watt steady state zone. That's why I pulled the pin pretty quick on this. I'm not going to complete a Llama lab test if the numbers are that far out. I hit tab on the Zwift workout, went to the 250 watt zone, and we were seeing still a separation of 20 to 25 watts through the steady state stuff. Absolutely horrible. Um, as comparison, the Magine single sided unit that I had the other day, that's what that looks like for the full 10 minutes and 20 minutes sections through here. So even though I was nitpicking that the other day, yeah, we got problems. So I stopped everything, uh, I kicked the dirt a little bit and uh, wondered what I was doing wrong. I then zero calibrated, or I miscalibrated the unit to make it read a wrong offset and then did a Llama lab test again. So I expected to be wrong here and it was, it was reading low. Excellent, cool, I had an impact or I influenced the readings of the power meter, which then gave me a chance to re-zero everything again and perform the Llama lab test or attempt to perform the Llama lab test. And again, I still pulled the pin. Um, I was getting left, right wonky, so you can see a little separation there between the Asium Uno and the Neo, but the in-peak was still way too high. So I pulled the pin on that. Um, I really wasn't happy with how that performed indoors whatsoever. That wasn't a power meter that I could compare to any other power meter. Um, if you were training in those zones, 20 watts to 25 watts difference is what it is, is what it is. So two days deep into using this power meter and collecting all the data and trying to understand what's going on and those three rides of which only one really succeeded, I packaged all this up and sent it over to InPeak for them to have a look at and to try and explain what was going on, especially why it was failing the Llama lab tests so far out. They responded pretty quickly within minutes, which was good, with the question of did I tighten the pinch bolts up on the crank to 14 Newton meters? They were around 12, I think, when I checked. So good call. I uninstalled everything last night. I reinstalled everything, re-greased everything, cleaned everything, got the torque wrench out to 14 Newton meters, which is the maximum setting as stamped on the uh, edge of the crank there. So 14 Newton meters, both sides, evened the, uh, the sides up. Everything was absolutely kosher. And then performing the zero offset, the unit said zero. So that was happy days for that. Fingers crossed, I was pretty excited to get on the road today and make sure that everything was all okay. Rabbit hole. Number four, here's today's data. So today's data, and I have to write this down because it got a little complex out on the road. Uh, zero offsets were performed at zero minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 45 minutes before I gave up and just rode home. Breaking those down. So the first five minutes, let's throw this data away because the crank was reinstalled, but let's have a gander anyway, what's going on. And the power crank in blue was reading low. Cool. This is where I jump on the bike, stump on the pedals, back pedal, jump, put the crank at 90 degrees and 180 and 270 and jump around and really push on it just to settle things down. So throw that data away, but it was reading low. Between five minutes and 15, um, we have the data here and it's reading high again. Um, through here, some steady states, we're looking at 272 versus 325. So we've got a massive separation. This is up against the Uno. So this is not left, right, wonkiness. This is left pedal and left crank arm being separated by a bucket load. Hmm. 15 minutes to 30 minutes, stopped, did another zero offset. It came back with another number on screen. Happy days, happy 15 minutes. That looks all pretty good, 243, 247. Um, up some hill climbs here, a little bit of separation through there. But other than that, uh, if we were to dive into just this hill climb here, that's looking pretty good. Again, the in peak is very jagged, it's very unsmooth. 291, 294, that's all good. I thought, okay, cool, we're done. Bottom of the hill at the 30 minute mark, re zeroed, bike perfectly straight up and down. The cranks, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, the bike perfectly still. Re zero offset done again. Ah, uh, that. What is, what is this? Um, same kind of hill and same kind of effort as well. It was the up opposite side that I rode up. Um, well out, well out with just one zero offset performed as per spec. Um, and just picking one spot here. So 327 versus 372. That's daylight between the left crank and the left pedal. Hmm. So persevered. Road, we found another hill, so this is me riding to another hill, 199 versus 241, Hey, Found another hill, 
Zero offset it again, the final time, we're done with zero offsetting this unit, so this is the last time I'd do that. Um, we even had a dropout for the Faveros. I don't care that there was a dropout from the Faveros. I care, I'll look at that later. I care about the massive separation between these two power meters now for no apparent reason other than I did an offset and now it's all skewed. So here's what we have. Um, again, pick a point in time, spin the uh, roulette wheel, 339 versus 365. And down here near the end, 341 versus 394. Uh, anyhow. So after this hill, I turned around, rode down the hill and rode home. I was done. I am done with zero offsets. My fingers were getting sore pressing the button so many times trying to offset this thing to get it read correctly. It wasn't going to happen. But then from there on, from the top of the hill home, it really wasn't too bad. It wasn't 50 watts out the whole way. So here's some steady state stuff through here. 203 versus 216. Well, okay, it's probably 13 watts difference, but it's not 50 watts difference. Um, mm. Anyhow, we're done here with the rabbit hole. So in wrap up today, look, that's been a frustrating three days, trying to understand this unit and trying to get it reading correctly. I'm still questioning what I'm doing wrong, but after a number of installations and comparisons against the Asuma Duos, the Asuma Unos, the Tax Neo, doing multiple zeros, and that multiple zero seemed to sending it all wonky. I, I don't know what's going on. Look, it has shown some brilliance there from ride number two from 15 minutes onwards, and in today's ride between 15 minutes and 30 minutes, that data was pretty good. Everything else was like spinning a roulette wheel and hoping that calibration or the zero offset would land on accurate. More times than not, it was landing on wonky as hell. The way the power crank tracked perfectly, even with the wrong offset, indicates that it's a zero offset issue or a calibration issue. Is it too sensitive? Because one calibration was fine, next calibration was way off, next calibration was off again, but it still seemed to track okay with the other power meter. So I'm putting it down to the calibration process being a little wonky or way too sensitive. So along with the previous rides and data I've sent over to InPeak, today's ride will also be sent over for review, so stay tuned on that one. I'll put a pinned comment below for any updates, any future videos I will do on this product. And now into the disclaimers here. So remembering this is not a review as such of the whole product range in general, this is my take as an end user and my experience to date with one single power meter. This is not representative or may not be representative of all the products or the entire range from this company. I should put little disclaimers across all my videos for this, but this is just my take on things and the frustrations I've had. Look, my final call here, would I use this particular unit that I've had to compare other power meters to as a baseline? Well, there's <laughs> no chance in hell I'll be doing that with that calibration being so different. Anyway, thanks for watching this one or bearing with me as we dive down the rabbit hole. Uh, stay tuned, I hope. It's not always happy days, or in this case, not a happy three days. We'll see you soon.